Time series plots are everywhere in scientific publications. Temperatures over time, pressures over time, concentrations over time. But the real insights often happen when we take variables and compare them to one another. But what do you do when your measurements were not taken at the same time values? Hi, I'm Pamela Schultz, and that was a question that we got in the comments from our last video where we added different data sets using Datagraph. And we're going to answer now this new problem in this video of what do you do about misaligned timestamps? We are going to be using Datagraph version 5.5. Datagraph is a professional application for data analysis and graphing. And if you want to follow along, you can get the data and the file that I'm creating in this video by downloading Datagraph and going to the Datagraph online example files. Let's get started. Let me start by introducing the data that I'm going to use in this analysis. Here we are now in Datagraph, and you can see that there's two data sets here. One is for temperature on the left-hand side, and then I have humidity on the right-hand side. And if you look at the start time for both of these data sets, they're very similar, but all you need to do is scroll down a little bit to see that there are very different amounts of data here. And if you look at the end time, they are similar. So in fact, it is the fact that we have a lot more temperature data than humidity data. And the first thing that I want to do is actually show you how you can just plot this data and then get a sense of what the relationship is or what the data looks like. So let's do that first of all with the temperature data. We can select our data set and go ahead and make a line plot of this and see how there's a, about three days of data here and that there is this change in temperature occurring over time. Now, one handy way that Datagraph lets you take data like this and plot it together is by using a split graph. If you go over to your Canvas settings and click on the split Y button, then you'll see that there are two different boxes where we can place our line graphs in. So now when I add my humidity line graph, I can, at the right hand side of my command, select which panel I'm going to have the humidity data graphed at. You can sort of see by this data now that there is kind of an inverse relationship between the two. I'm also going to want to add titles and some line styling here. Uh, but this is a way to get a very quick look at least at what the data is. And if I also add points to each of these lines, that also gives me then a pretty clear look at what the issue is in terms, again, of the sparsity of my humidity data. Even though I have this whole series and I can see the trend, if I want to plot temperature versus, hum versus humidity, these are not at the same time points. Another way to really see this very clearly that you can do with Datagraph is you can click and zoom in on the data. So you essentially click on a point on the graph and then drag your cursor while you're still holding down your touchpad or your mouse. And when you let go, then it will be zoomed in on that region. And here we can do it again to really see clearly that, yep, these time points don't match. You can also scan through your data set. And if you want to now unzoom, then go over to the left of that bar that uh, hovers on the bottom of the graph, click the two arrows that go out, and then you can go both back out to the full data set. The way that we're going to solve this problem in Datagraph is to use linear interpolation. This will let us compute what the value is or an estimate of what the value is for humidity at the time points where we have temperature using the linear value between two points in our humidity data set. To do this, we're going to use the plot action column. You can find the plot action column or add it to your data table by using the other drop down menu and click plot action. We're going to actually place this column in the temperature group. So you can just click and drag it into that group because we're going to uh, use linear interpolation to compute the humidity values where we have the data for temperature. So the X and Y that we need to place within the plot action column are actually 
the humidity X and Y columns. That's our data set that we're going to be interpolating from. You can use the menus to select those columns, or you can actually just click and drag the columns themselves and drop them onto those menus to populate them. We're not going to integrate, however, you want to change this to interpolate. And when you do, there will then be another option that you need to populate, which is the locations. Where do you want to calculate humidity at what time points? And for that, we're going to use the temperature time points as our locations. Now we have a column of humidity values. You'll see at the ends where there are values missing, that's because we don't have humidity data within that time range. Uh, but now that we have these two columns, now we can actually analyze the relationship between them. Now that we have humidity estimated at all the same timestamps that we have our temperature values measured, we can go ahead and analyze the relationship between these two. I'm going to go ahead and create a scatter plot of this data. And that will let me see that indeed there is this uh, inverse linear relationship between these two variables, whereas when I have increasing temperature, I have decreasing humidity. And this was something that uh, was somewhat obvious from looking at the data, but now we can really see it by actually plotting these values together where I have them at the same timestamps. One thing you might want to do is to also overlay your estimated values onto your original data set for humidity as a way to just double check that the interpolation is being done in a way that you agree with. In fact, there are a couple of options for how the interpolation is done. I started off here using a linear interpolation. This data actually is well suited to that given the number of points I have. But you also could use a, uh, a cubic interpolation or a spline. There's more information on that on our health website if you want to learn more about those methods. Uh, but a, one word of caution I will say is that if you have data that has a lot of noise in it, then this may not be the right method for you to use. In fact, I probably would not use linear interpolation. I would uh, recommend considering, for example, a low S smoothing technique uh, is one way you can do it. Actually, the plot action also has a smoothing option, but we did a video on low S smoothing a couple of videos back that I'll put a link in the description of this video for that I think would work really well for something like this where you have noisy data. That's it for this data graph demo. Give us a like if this was helpful for you. And any other questions or problems that you have, you can put them in the comments. Let us know what you think of this technique or email us help at visualdatatools.com. Thanks for watching.